difficult to make super tasty falafels at home. It's cheap, but super tasty, nutritious, quick to make. Uh, it's a great recipe cooking for many people. So you just cook a big batch of falafels, pita bread, hummus, uh, maybe a little tabbouleh and you've got a feast. You cannot have a decent falafel without a decent hummus recipe. They're like brother and sister or, or cousins. So I'm going to be showing you how I make a super sexy... <laughs> so I'm going to be showing... <laughs> I'm going to be showing you how to make a super tasty hummus recipe at home. When making a hummus, it's very important that you think carefully about the quantities that go into the hummus recipe. You can't just chuck randomly uh, chickpeas, tahinis. You can do that and sometimes you'll get lucky, but it's good for me to have a consistent recipe that you go back to again and again because you know it's always going to be amazing. You can buy hummus in all of the supermarkets, the typical supermarkets, but I prefer to make it at home because it's easy. Uh, it's always tastier, less preservatives, you can control the amount of oil that you put into it and it's just better. Homemade is 9 times out of 10 homemade is better. So I don't go towards the side that hummus needs to be super smooth. For me, the most important thing is the taste. And actually, I like to keep a little bit of texture in my hummus. So that's why I choose to use the food processor. If you want a really smooth hummus, you can do two things. One, we can peel the skins off the chickpeas. And two, you can blend it in a high speed blender and that will get you a nice silky smooth hummus if that's what you're looking for. For most traditional falafel recipes, you don't cook the chickpeas beforehand. You soak the chickpeas for around 24, sometimes 48 hours until they're nice and soft. And then you blend them into the falafel mixture. And this is what holds them together. If you cook the chickpeas and then do it, you'll find that when you put the falafels in the oil, they fall apart. So that's not the way to go. As you can see, when you soak the chickpeas for 24 hours, the cytic acid comes to the top. And that's the white stuff that you can see on top. So that's a good sign. By removing the cytic acid, you're more likely to digest the falafels better. I'm going to drain all of that cytic acid off and then wash it in cold water to make sure it's all nice and clean. Get a pan on the stove on a medium heat. Add the olive oil. And now we're going to caramelize these onions nicely. the onions. In traditional falafel recipes they don't caramelize the onions, they just put them in raw. And for me this is an extra moment to get caramelization and sweetness into the falafel mix. So a few minutes later they're looking something like this. At this stage it's good to go in with the spices and we're going to caramelize them for an additional two minutes after the spices go in to intensify the flavor. Stirring to make sure that they don't burn. Nice and caramelized. When I use fresh garlic in recipes, I like to take out the middle root of the garlic as it can be quite intense sometimes. I'm using my little food processor for this. So I'm gonna put my chickpeas, my soaked chickpeas and the fresh herbs in and give it a good blend. The truth is that this machine is probably a little bit small for this quantity but it was my only option. I could have done it in two goes but I decided not to. Next I'm going to go in with the caramelized spiced onions and some raw garlic. At 
this stage, you should be able to squeeze it into a ball and it hold together. That's a sign that it's done. And then you're going to make some balls like this and then perhaps flatten them slightly. This is my preferred shape because they fry better when you put them in a pan. And there we go. So to give the falafel some freshness, I'm prepping a little salad using tomatoes, cucumber and lettuce, iceberg lettuce. I'm chopping it nice and small. At last, the final job is to fry the falafels. So you want to get some hot vegetable oil. When you drop your first falafel in, it should start sizzling like so. And that's how you know that the oil is hot enough. We're going to cook these until well, until they have a nice colour really, which should take around 3 or 4 minutes. And these are looking perfect, lovely and golden brown. Drain them onto some kitchen paper and give them a little bit of salt. Let's open one up, look at that. And now we'll go in with the salad, which in my case is cucumber, some chopped tomato, and some sauerkraut, which is a fermented cabbage. A little bit of iceberg lettuce gives an additional crunch too. Here's some tahini sauce that I made earlier, a tahini dressing. And because I like spicy, I'm going to add some chili sauce into that tahini to make a spicy tahini sauce. And then I'm going to drizzle it all over the top of the falafel. Now this doesn't look, it's not an Instagrammable picture, but I don't care because it was tasty and that's the way it's eaten. Final result, there you have it. Homemade falafel with homemade hummus and homemade pita bread. So it's the moment for the taste test. My mouth is literally watering, I'm super hungry, but I'm really looking forward to Digging, my, uh, digging myself into this. <laughs> so, here we go. Delicious. Really, really, really nice. The falafel is super crispy. There's a nice amount of hummus in there. And the freshness, also if you want to bake the falafels instead of frying them because you want to consume less oil that's absolutely fine you can bake them on 180 degrees for 30 minutes they're not going to have the exact same taste and consistency but they're still going to be tasty and they're going to be a more sustainable option i hope that that video was proof that it's not difficult to make your own falafels it's not difficult to make your own hummus and you can do it in a relatively relatively short space thank you so much for tuning in to this video guys i really hope you enjoyed watching it as much as i enjoy making it if you do do this recipe then please leave a comment in the comment section and let me know how you get on and subscribe to be the first to become aware of upcoming videos